Okay. Hello everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins Weekly Infrastructure Team Meeting. We are 11 of April 2023. Today is around the table. You have myself, Damien Duportal, Hervé Lemeur, Mark Wait, Stéphane Merle. Just see that Kevin Martins just joined us. Hello, Kevin. Okay, so you should have the notes here. Um, <clears throat> they have been uh, shared on the Jenkins Dash Infra IRC channel as well. Let's get started with announcement. So the weekly 2040 uh, is okay, uh, has been done. So the release of the sign war went well. We had the hiccup during the packaging, restarting the build fixed the issue. And I've just triggered the container. So I expect the release to be finished with the last backlog items in the upcoming hours. Um, a note about the, I think that will be worth opening an issue uh, about the, the problem that has been seen during the packaging step. Um, I'm opening the Jenkins CI slash packaging repository, which has uh, scripts for the different kind of packages. We are looking at the script in charge of publishing the war once generated. The goal is to retrieve the, the generated official war from the release from uh, Gfrog, and then copy the war file to the different mirrors and virtual machines acting as mirrors or references for us. And one of the final step is to upload the website for the war, which includes a few HTML files. It happened in two instructions. The first instruction copies from the temporary directory, which is the variable $d on my screen, to the official war directory. That's a copy from a local directory to another local directory. Then the second step, rsync, does exactly the same, except it runs on the remote PKG server machine. That's why rsync used the SSH protocol for the second instruction. That's the second time that the first instruction from local to local, it's a permission denied, followed by a connection timeout while running rsync. That's the step where S-Rsync has created the footer and header HTML as temporary files inside the directory and are trying to move them to override the existing files. That step fails with a word and unexpected message error. If you retry the builds, that will just fix the issue. The reason is because the war dir variable points to a moon point in which there is a blob uh, storage account, which is a kind of, uh, uh, it's like the same as three things, but for Azure, it's not a POSIX compliant system. It's an, an uh, object uh, storage and not a file system. The, we use Kubernetes with its, which use CSI driver, which converts and give the impression you are browsing a directory while in fact, it's sending requests to a remote HTTP server. And it's not fully POSIX. And that driver used the dreaded uh, CIFS uh, system from Microsoft that may work or might not. But what is sure is that that CIFS implementation is not POSIX. So for sure, AirSync here try to run a system call, which is POSIX, but the implementation seems to panic because not only we have a permission denied error, which makes no sense in that case, the permission are fully are 777 on data system. And also it says time out, which is the weird one. I mean, writing a file in time out, that's something you don't, you haven't seen since years, right? So yeah, um, I think it's worth an issue uh, to explain that we have to retry in that case, that happens from time to time. Uh, long term, uh, we have to fix that issue by replacing AirSync here by BlobXFR or better Azure uh, Blob, whatever copy that should work exactly the same as AirSync. 
except instead of copying from a local to what looks like a local directory, we'll be sending it directly to the storage system. Is there any question about that topic? Okay, it's on me to open the issue and point it to the, I think that will be on the release. Uh, help desk and eventually update it here. So is released package incoming Docker image. Uh, do you have another announcement, folks? No. Nope. Yes. Yes. As, ah, yes uh, oh, we've got. It's already been announced. Uh, no, it's in the upcoming calendar section. Security advisory will be published tomorrow for Jenkins plugins, as disclosed by the security team earlier today. Yep. I see. We have an official image. Security advisory tomorrow. So let's look at the upcoming calendar then. So next week we can expect Jenkins 2.401. Next week we will be the uh, 18, right? Yes. Uh, correct. Uh, I don't remember when is the next LTS. Uh... Good question. It's four weeks since the last one, so it will be May the 3rd. May. That would be 2.387.3. And baseline selection for the next LTS should happen, uh, ah, yes, by next Wednesday. So 2.400 or 2.401 are likely candidates. Next Friday, did you say? Next Wednesday, 19th, 19 April. Okay. So the advisory for tomorrow is plugins only, which means uh, we can work on Kubernetes. We have to be sure that trusted CI and the PKG machine are okay during the process. Well, and, and in general, during the publication period, it's best if Kevin and I do not merge anything to the Jenkins documentation side so we don't disrupt the security team. They, they adapt usually quite well, but, but if we can avoid merging, they'll, they, they will certainly be grateful. Okay. Next major events tomorrow. Devox. Devox France in Paris. Um, Hervé will be there if you want to meet. Yes, thank you, Hervé. CDCon is in May. May 8th oh. and 9th, and I'll be there. 8th, 9th. And Alex Brandis will be there as well. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Who is at Mark? Wait, and... Oh, we don't have. A... I don't think we have a, a. Yeah, exactly. We will have one in community right. discourse. Mm -hmm. Other major event of uh, incoming? Well, so so I've got a. This isn't a calendar item. Maybe it's back to announcements. I forgot to make a a, a fun announcement. The plugin site now has health scores displayed on the top level on the top level plugins. So you, you see a, a rapid indication that you should not use the GitHub organization folder because it's a 65 out of 100 score. Meh. <laughs> plug the, yeah, the plugin site, plugin health score is now visible on the plugin site. And yes, there's more to, more there will be more improvements coming, but it's the fact that it's already visible thanks to a Google summer of code um, candidate that wanted to continue contributing. Even if it wasn't in the GSOC program. Exactly. Exactly. As Hervé said, even though the project to do this work was dropped from the Google Summer of Code work, the, the contributor said, I want to do it anyway, and went ahead and did it, and is working very nicely with it. 
that's really impressive. Thanks for that. Is it announcement or announcement without the E after the C? Uh, e after the C. So the, the one on line two is the correct spelling. Yeah, there we go. Thanks. No, that, that's got to be a French word. <laughs> is it not I a French word? Here. It uh, ends yeah. it ends with M E N T. It's got to be a French word, isn't it? Uh, no, annonce. No, okay. Uh, no, so for, no. The, the, forgive that my linguistic the boundaries. That, continue. <laughs> so let's get started with the tasks we were able to finish. Um, so first of all, thanks Hervé for contacting Digital Ocean and ensuring with them that they continue sponsoring us at least until the end of the sponsoring one year cycle. Um, they they gave us enough money to continue at the defined rate, which clearly uh, removed the month of March where we we overused the digital ocean due to the AWS issues. So thanks, Hervé. That's really good news, and that's also a great opportunity to see if we can continue the sponsorship. We've closed the issue in the help desk because that issue was only about infrastructure tracking but we expect uh, eventually, stop me if I'm incorrect, but the blog post to greet them because that's really nice of them to help us on that area and to be so so quick to do, do that. Is that correct, Hervé, Kevin? Cool, thanks. Out of space on a CI Jenkins IO agent in bomb build. So thanks, Hervé. Uh, um, Thanks to your work, we were able to ensure that any agent is now mounting the slash TMP and the M2 default repository folder, even if not always used by the Maven builds because we specify another. But now they are mounted uh, as an empty deer. An empty deer is a directory directly mounted on the virtual machine hosting the pod containers in opposition of writing by default inside the container file system, which is terrible. Because if you try to write on slash, uh, on, uh, slash home Jenkins, for instance, uh, that will be written on a low performances system. Initially, we wanted to mount slash home slash Jenkins, but Kubernetes doesn't behave like Docker. So when we mount an, an empty dir inside the uh, directory inside a container, empty deer is not named empty for nothing. It empties the directory. While Docker, usually when you mount a data volume on Docker, it copy the data from the image that was in the initial directory and replace it by the mount point, like we you would have on Linux, for instance. So yeah, we decided to at least define the M2 repository, which can be accidentally used by other users, but not mount the slash home Jenkins home dir because it contains required files that we build. So that's why. Along with that, Hervé was able to measure, let's say worst case, worst case situation where a single bomb bill was generated was generating 22 gigabytes inside that empty deer. So since we run three pods at the same time, and the fact that once a pod is stopped, the empty deer is cleaned up, we were able to say, oh, instead of 200 gigabytes on uh, AWS per machine, we should decrease to 90 gigabytes. That should allow us to gain some bucks. That's not a lot, but it's worth not using too much. On DigitalOcean, it's a bit different. 200 gigabyte is the default of the machine. We cannot decrease it. So we have way more space on DigitalOcean Kubernetes nodes than what, what we have on AWS. So that issue about out of space for the bomb builds is definitively closed. Thanks, Hervé. As usual, if you see anything related to the space usage for the bomb builds on CI Jenkins IO or on any plugin builds that are both running on container, please open an help desk issue that might or might not be related to this. 
Um, problem in finding an artifact from a third repository. So everyone was able to fix the issue for these users. So it's the second or third time that we have user building a plugin that use uh, artifacts from a repository which is not ours. So we need to add exception. That was also the opportunity for Hervé to start a script to check on all the plugins, the, the kind of usages. So it's local right now, but the goal is to identify the repositories that we don't have mirrored on GFrog and that could or could not be used by plugins. So I understand it's still an early step, but the nice discovery is that YQ command line can treat and parse XML, which is really useful when you want to make simple requests like this one. Yeah. Um, so as a, now Hervé expects from me a method to get the list of the mirror repositories that we have on GFrog. That's an API call that anyone can do. It's that doesn't require authentication, but I need to share it. And we will continue on an upcoming issue. The goal is to uh, check with the C Gen Jenkins security team if each of these repositories are acceptable and should we mirror them or keep the exception. For the records, there are more than 100 uh, uh, third party repository in uh, every plugin. Not that it's it's not a problem to have the exception in the setting because AC, the goal of ACP is to decrease the bandwidth from GFrog instance. So if we have exception like this one, that means that our agent directly connects to the other repositories. They don't consume through GFrog. So it's not a problem for the goal of the ACP itself. It's a problem to maintain the list of exception though, because that could cause issues like this one. And also, that's a point about the, that could be discussed on the plugin health score area. Should we score a plugin? Should we add one, a new score that would say, hey, if you don't use the GFrog mirrored repository, meaning with infrastructure and Jenkins security analysis, then you might lose a bit of scoring. Or if you are maybe a positive one, if you use only GFrog, then you increase your scoring. I don't know how it works, but that's a discussion to have because if you use external things that aren't scanned by the, the security team, then that could create problems with your plugin. Did I miss anything, Hervé? No, it was good. So Hervé's so yeah. tool potentially could also be used to explore scalability questions on artifact caching proxy or to prime the artifact caching proxy. I mean, what you're, what you're doing is creating a large test case for the artifact caching proxy, aren't you, Hervé? Uh, no, my, what I've, uh, how I receive this information is by uh, querying the um, XML in every in each plugins. Mm -hmm. It's not really. Uh, I haven't. Uh, it's not directly related to the certification proxy. Um, but if it were executed behind the artifact caching proxy, you would uh, yeah. cause the artifact caching proxy to be loaded with that content, wouldn't you? Yes, but it must be uh, first mirrored in or Shifrog instance. For oh, the artifact oh. caching proxy, be able to cache it. it. Okay. So yeah, in a sense, it would expand the 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 the, the, the amount of dependency cached by the yeah. artifact caching proxy. But yeah. So First, so it to be in the in the Shifrog instance. Mm. I'm I'm accustomed to using a Maven command to to fill the caches. The dependency colon go dash offline command. I may send that to you separately in case in case you want to try that. It's yep. it uses Maven to do the parsing and then it does a full recursion of all the dependencies. I'm interested. Yes, thanks. I'll, I'll send you a link to it. And I have to drop off. 
OK, repositories. Yep. Uh, next issue that we can't reset Jira account password at the account. We were able to successfully renew the signing certificate for Jenkins course. So congratulations to everyone. That was a huge team effort. And we did it with a 2.400 version and with the Jenkins latest LTS along with updated GPG keys. So now we know how to, how to run and the uh, expiration of both the GPG key and the DG cert code signing are in three years both. So we will change them, the two of them at the same time next year. Um, there should be uh, soon a post-mortem on uh, what could we improve, including doing it six months in advance. So we are sure that it's not late. The goal will be to avoid reaching the expiration date when we switch uh, the keys. Um, yeah, that's all for this topic. We still have an issue about updating the documentation that should be fixed soon. CI Jenkins IO disk was almost full. Thanks, uh, Stefan, for taking care uh, of that huge one. Uh, that will generate a lot of discussion and changes and fixes. Um, we had the leftovers, like six, uh, 60 gigabyte of leftovers of backups and stuff like this. We had 100 gigabytes of uh, not discarded build logs and a lot of builds are storing a lot of ar archived artifacts on the file system. So we cleaned up uh, anything we could, everything has been done uh, here. So the issue was closed because we were able to, to go uh, below the 80% usage threshold. Uh, issues have been open for all of the fixes, so uh, we'll come to this later. We also had the same kind of issue on trusted CI Jenkins IO, but this one wasn't because of the Jenkins home, but of the, the amount of uh, Docker images for each LTS update we had since one or two years, so fixed by removing these images. Thanks again, Stefan, for taking care of monitoring and ensuring the platform works. We updated all of our controller to the latest LTS version released last week with the new code signing certificate. Okay. And the GPG key was also, uh, the new GPG key was also used for that LTS. So no more signing certificate issues, congrats. Did I miss something on the closed tasks? Okay, let's proceed. We have a lot of running issue and new issues as well. Um, first, realign. So the goal for the issues that we have there, it's a Kanban rule. Uh, do we keep working on it or do we postpone? I propose to postpone the realign repo Jenkins CI org mission. I haven't had time during the past three weeks to work on this topic, the HA uh, high availability LDAP uh, to sustain if we enable authentication of the uh, GFrog mirrors. Right now we are waiting from GFrog to meet them to, to make a status, especially with the amount of data that should be not downloaded due to the uh, let's say uh, abusive IPs, but it looks like it's a bit more complicated than that. As Mark uh, underlined, we might have mirrors, people using the mirror, uh, that as a free mirror, so we might need to enable authentication. The upcoming week won't have any time to work on this. So unless someone objects, I will put it back to the infra team sync next and until we meet GFROG. Is that okay for you? Ubuntu 22.04 upgrade campaign. So that went pretty well. Hervé and I were able to deliver this one uh, for the agents. So now all the CI Jenkins IO agents are using Ubuntu 22.04. Uh, everything went well with a tiny minor exception. Switching to Ubuntu 22.04 broke the, some Ansible test case on the packaging when using the old Amazon Linux 2. Uh, that might be related to the systemd and cgroups updates. Ubuntu 22 features at least cgroups version 2. 
which changed the way the control groups are run by underlying container. And it's not the only major upgrade. But thanks to Basil, uh, the uh, nice work has been done, especially pumping the Amazon Linux operating system version, which worked very well inside Ubuntu, uh, and other uh, GDK related issues. So thanks, Basil. Sorry for the breakage here. That was one tricky. Um, now I propose we keep working on that Ubuntu 22 upgrade campaign. Um, so we have the following item being worked. Uh, an is another issue from that Stefan is taking care about migrating trusted.ci to Azure. Uh, I understand, Stefan, that you proposed, I think the issue is here. Mm -hmm. 2486 for trusted CI machines. So I understand, Stefan, can you tell me if I'm wrong? Uh, you propose to start the new machines uh, for the free virtual machines that are currently running Ubuntu 18 on AWS to start directly to Ubuntu 22 on Azure. Yes, we try. Cool. Um, so Hervé, you will you will have low low bandwidth this week, so I don't expect you to spend some time on Ubuntu 22. If it's okay for you, I plan to check and eventually upgrade uh, the node groups that we could have on Kubernetes on our Kubernetes clusters. Check the Ubuntu version, if any. On as on AKS, I think it's AKS, and eventually Digital Ocean. If I see that there is a possibility to upgrade the underlying node groups, I will uh, start the operations to to do it during this week. Any objection on this one? Oh no, great. And eventually, Docker dash Open VPN. I'm sure this one uses uh, as base image. So these are the three next steps for this issue. Is that okay for you? We don't have to finish this free subtask for the upcoming milestone, but the goal is to do a little bit every milestones. So I'm adding the new milestone unless someone objects. Okay, let's continue on the other tasks. Document the code signing certificate renewal process. So that one will migrate on the next milestone. The pull request is open. So I'm waiting for a review approval. And if everything goes, we merge it. Worst case, we have a few changes to do to the doc, but that one automatically moved to the next milestone. Stefan, about Azure RM64, can you give us a status and let us know if you will be able to continue working on it during the next milestone? I hope to be able to as a, as a back, uh, back uh, work. Okay. Um, for now, I'm stuck with uh, uh, silly problems that I don't quite well understand, but I tried to open uh, an issue with uh, Baker, so I'm I'm hoping to have some uh, some direction to follow. I'm stuck with the RM64 versus AMD not uh, uh, allowed to be used. Okay. So thanks for opening the issue. May I ask you to add a comment here to report what? Oh yeah. What kind of issue did you met and point here the issues you opened? on subsequent just to, to document it. Yes, you're right. Thanks. Uh, as a reminder, the goal of uh, IRM64 is to be able to get rid of uh, agent virtual machine on EC2 and to eventually start studying what we could run uh, uh, to decrease our costs, but that's secondary. Next issue, password reset email not coming through. So we don't have access to the SunGrid's configured uh, email sending server for account Jenkins.io. So we cannot check when an email doesn't reach a remote machine. 
So if it's okay for you, Hervé, are you okay? I will command this issue. And the goal is now that we have access to the MailGun accounts. At least for accounts, Jenkins IO, the, the amount of email is low. So we should stay on the free chair, as I understand. So I need to create accounts for both of you, Stefan and Hervé. And then Hervé should be able to update the configuration of accounts, Jenkins IO, to switch to MailGun. So we should be able then to work with that user and solve upcoming issues. Is that okay for you, Hervé? So I'm co-assigning and I will take care of commenting, uh, reporting on that issue. So you should be able to start working on it as soon as uh, I've sent the mail gun issue account. We have an issue about artifact caching proxy being unreliable. Um, so it was in the, the U, there were two errors. One on the bomb builds running on digital ocean. So we should be able to check it again. And the second issue was when trying to use all the steps of the ATH builds. So we will have to diagnose a bit more. It's uh, for the first case. For the second case, it looks like um, a lot of uh, uh, network errors. So um, there are some incoming issues. I will move it to the next week and we'll continue diagnosing here because there isn't anything obvious. So it's a low level thing especially on the network area. Um, so yeah, that's uh, anyone willing to take some time. By default, I will take some time. One of the main actionable we have here is to change the network where the CI Jenkins IO agents running in Azure are spawned. The goal is to move them to a closer network than the ACP server and see if the issues continue happening on Azure. And in, for digital ocean, it's a bit more subtle. We need uh, we need to dig more. Any question? So I move this one to the next milestone. We continue working a bit on this one. We have add launchable to agent. So I understand, Hervé, you volunteer for this one. Um, so let's remove triage from here. So the goal is to install the launchable command line on our Packer images at least to be sure that it's available for already. It's not needed to be installed each time. So it's uh, at least for Linux. Ideally, if you are able to install it also on Windows, that will help Basil a lot. I'm moving into the next milestone. One check is uh, ensuring that we don't need launchable on the web builder images uh, for the websites running on CI Jenkins IO. I propose it as a secondary objective. That's a question to raise, but I understood it was initially for pipeline library, meaning for Maven calls. So let's see. Um, so Stefan, thanks for opening that issue about migration of trusted CI Jenkins IO from AWS to Azure. Uh, there are three goals. The main goal here is keeping control of our infrastructure by moving uh, sensitive machines in clouds that any Jenkins Infra team member can manage. The AWS account is still used and provided by CloudBees, which is very kind of them because they, they pay for the bill. But that doesn't allow non cloud biz employee to access the management of these machines. So the main issue here is the safety by moving trusted CI Jenkins IO and associated machines, which are in charge of generating update center, deploying Jenkins IO, and some other trusted tasks. The goal is to move them in a dedicated network in Azure virtual machines. So we should be able to streamline the management. Secondary objective is migrating these machines to Ubuntu 22 LTS that we referred earlier. And the third objective is to try to decrease the AWS bill that will help on that area because we should have some margin to, to pay for these machines on Azure. Um, thanks, Stefan. We have a to-do list that looks really good about what are the expected tasks. 
So our, are you okay uh, to work on this next milestone? Yes, with pleasure. Cool. Um, an issue that is almost closable. Uh, there has been an issue on the automatic renewal of the certificate for updates Jenkins uh, IO and JenkinsCI.org. The certificate has been renewed. Uh, we have uh, an event in the calendar in two months to check for the next renew event. The last step is before that, we need to enable a logging of the cron tab renewal to the syslog system on the virtual machines. That's an option on the puppet module that we use. Instead of having, having a third bot renew quiet mode, which doesn't help us to diagnose what happened. Most probably the failure in automatic renewal come from the breakage I did last month on updating all the Python installation and setbot versions. But we don't really know, we don't have any logs that shows the error, so that's why we'll need to be careful next time. So once we are sure that setbot renew command is uh, written, its result is written inside syslog, so applied, we wait 24 hours and we check the syslog, and we see that the third bot renew should say, hey, I've tried to renew this certificate and they are not bound to expire. Once we see that, then we close the issue. Clear for everyone? Yeah. Thanks, Stefan, for the help on this one. So that one moved to the next. And now we have billing behaviors. So last month, we exploded the cloud billings on all the services all of them. Um, the root causes are a drastic increase on the BOM builds that are costing a lot, on the ATH builds, which is the same, but also we had a lot of releases and a lot of bandwidth and download from the mirrors, packages, and from the uh, update center, sorry. Um, we also seem to see consequences of this that increase on builds on different areas. Um, first of all, I try to details something that was discussed privately because it was CloudBees internal due to the AWS account. So now I've uh, published what uh, the excerpt of the discussion. The goal is to decrease uh, what we consume on AWS. Trusted moving the virtual machine of trusted CI is one of these elements. So there is an issue with a lot of details. On the short-term leverage for that milestone, we have a, a work that is in progress about cleaning up the snapshots created by Packer that should be almost $1,000 per month once it's finished. We have a work about trying to optimize the BOM builds. The, for this milestone, the goal will be to split the node pools between BOM builds and plugins build. So we will be able to check the CPU and memory usages and see if we can optimize packing pods or maybe move the workload to other clouds. Finally, we have migrating update, CI Gen uh, update Jenkins IO. The Apache server serving the update center index costs between 3K to almost 6K on a busy month per month of outbound bandwidth. So given the relationship we have with DigitalOcean, the proposal that we all agreed privately on and that we can start discussing is to move that machine as it, as a first time, to DigitalOcean because we have a partnership with DigitalOcean that provide um, X, uh, Intel machines. So we should be able to, to migrate it efficiently. Uh, and we have terabytes of data. Uh, we saw 30 terabytes of data per month of outbound bandwidth, and we don't have to pay for that, that, for that outbound bandwidth on, on digital. We wanted to use Oracle a few months before, but the partnership with Oracle uh, is still, it's not bad, but it's still a tiny partnerships. So we prefer going to digital ocean right now because they are really, really, really at ease with us. And then we will see to extend, uh, to uh, uh, make that service highly available in the future. But right now we could yeah, uh, avoid spending three 
to 6K per month. So that should be a huge win. We have the trusted CI migration that should uh, also help us. So we are at that state. The proposal is we start with these elements and then iterate the week after. So that one move automatically to the next speeding session that will be a long running issue. Sorry for that, folks. Um, Stefan, one big for you that we will move is uh, the certificate for the update center generator crawler and update center. So that one I can help. Uh, I will need to because I did the first part and I need yep. that to be signed by someone with the rights to. Yep. I propose that we pair on this one. Is that okay for you? I thought you were not in the list of people uh, having the, the cert. Mm, but I we would might. Pair. That's fine. I, I might, but I propose we pair on this one. Okay. That one must be done. It's end of May, but better to do it in April. Oh, yeah. Okay for you? The sooner the better, yes. Cool. Um, finally, one last issue is uh, related to CI Jenkins IO and related to the disk full that we had. So we saw a lot of outbound bandwidth. So to summarize the discussion, um, we want to use an Azure Artifact Manager plugin that will ensure that CI Jenkins IO start archiving artifacts inside an Azure bucket. The goal is to reduce the pressure in terms of IO on the data disk used for the controller and to decrease the storage needs because uh, the, uh, the archive artifact will be on the bucket. What, why will, would that uh, help us on the outbound bandwidth? Because we should be able to measure careful, uh, really, really precisely what is the outbound bandwidth caused by stash and stash to the Kubernetes cluster on AWS and DigitalOcean compared to the data downloaded directly through the web UI of CI Jenkins IO. So that one requires first configuring the artifact caching proxy. Then we will have more discussions to, uh, we have different options that we need to report on that issue. About that, we had a lot of issues in triage mode. So let me open all the two triage issue because some will need to be done. So the artifact manager to store archive artifacts so, sorry, I'm, I'm going through the issues one by one. Uh, that one need to be checked. We missed this one, so I'm, I, I'm adding it here. That's an account one. Um, we need, as you both of you, thanks for that work, when you check the disk issues, uh, in order to ease our operation, we need to add labels or elements that will help us to immediately detect which virtual machines and which metric on Datadog. The Puppet module, as, uh, thanks for uh, from Hervé researches, shows us that we can use configuration variables to enable AWS automatic detection and to force some labels that we can add with the name of the machine or the service that should help. So that one, I propose we move it to the upcoming milestone because it's one or two lines. Any objection? Agreed. I'm in the mood of doing a lot of uh, Puppet and Yara data. <laughs> uh, that one is uh, related to CI Jenkins IO uh, disk full. The goal is to install the global build discorder and add a global build discarding policy by default, unless uh, pipelines or, or job configuration says something else. That should uh, help because based on what we saw, some of the builds didn't add any. So having a global build discarder will help a lot on reducing the, the amount of storage. So that one is also plugin installation. Any objection if we install this one uh, at, with the same transaction as the Azure uh, Artifact uh, Manager? Yeah, no, we have to take advantage of that. That's a plugin. And then configuration will happen after that one. 
So the Azure Artifact Manager, I've added accidentally the outbound uh, costs on the upcoming milestone. I didn't. I've... So let me, that one is the direct actionable for that milestone, while 3485, this one is, we don't have any actionable un, until the other is done. So right oh, yeah. now, I'm moving it here. Artifact caching, do we have another yes, change? Have the, 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 yes, this one. Is that correct? Yeah, and this one can be done but with the other one. That one, we don't need try edge for this one. It was already try edged. Change the disk space is below one gigabyte to 80% disk usage. That one is interesting, but not prior. I don't feel we will have time this week. Is it you, okay? You, if... you don't think it will it will match with the other one for, for Datadog? That's not the same kind of? Absolutely not. The goal okay. here is to change the the request we do on Datadog. Yeah. So it will be uh, alerting us when we have 80% of disk usage or one gigabyte, because we have uh, some disks that are really oh. short in size. So we need uh, to improve the request. I won't have time to spend on this one. I don't say it's not important. I just say it's not top priority. Um, how do you feel about this one? No advice? I, I thought that would be an easy I one. You can take it if you want. If you prefer, as you want. Oh, it's, yeah? it's not it's not to take it and not to take it. It's do we is that is that something we 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 can manage for for the next week? That's that's the point because we really need it. Yeah. I don't I feel we that really was need easy. it. But yeah, it's not that easy. Yes, we I, need I, it, but it's. Do I'm we assuming it's it? not that easy. Most of the time, when I think it's easy, it's not. So I got it. So I've added to the next milestone since survey volunteer, uh, and let's see if. No, no obligation uh, to finish this for the upcoming milestone, especially with the low bandwidth you have. Sounds good for you, folks? Yeah. Okay, that's all for me. I will update the notes. Do you have other things you want to uh, add to the next milestone? Signing autograph for Harvey, but that's not an issue. Fair. Okay, so I'm... Stopping sharing a screen. I'm stopping the recording. So for people watching us, see you next week. Bye.